Hi, welcome to Pencil Bank in our presentation with uh, Swipe. Uh, my name is Marcus Almer and I'm an analyst here at the bank. I have with me Robert Puskaric, who is uh, CEO of, of Swipe. So, hi Robert. Hello Marcus. So, I will, I will leave the word to you uh, to talk for about 20, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll come back with the Q&A. Great. Um, I can't see the audience, but I, uh, I assume that you are there in front of me. So uh, I'm with you here today to talk about our company, Swipe. Uh, and um, let's see, it's this one. My name is Robert Puskaric. I'm the CEO and president since a little bit more than one year back. And uh, I'm uh, going to uh, present to you a little bit of Swipe in brief as a company, what we do, and then the two different offerings that we have, which is Swipe Pay and Swipe Access, and why we think that we are uh, at the inflection point of creating this market worldwide. So if we then um, talk about Swipe in brief, we are a technology company offering a complete uh, um, solution, which is uh, a, a card consisting of uh, a number of components that are integrated into a solution, uh, making it possible to offer complete uh, biometric payment cards by our customers or complete cards that are uh, there to um, open doors or uh, um, kind of identify uh, you uh, in terms of authentication of access to different type of parameters. Um, we offer both hardware, software, uh, power harvesting solutions, a management system on the chip. Uh, there are also implementation of biometric algorithms. Uh, we help our customers with manufacturing processes and packaging methods. And then in the end, we decide if the company or if the card is to become a payment card or an access card and the only difference between these two uh, tracks is that we deploy different type of applets on the card. The company is founded in 2009 in Norway, headquartered in Norway. Uh, we are a small team today consisting of some 28 people scattered all over the world basically in 10 different countries and we are working through a pretty large partner network in terms of companies either doing um, either manufacturing payment cards or companies that are active in the security sector uh, deploying different type of entrance solutions. Uh, and we are listed at both Stockholm uh, First North and Euronext uh, in uh, Oslo. So uh, if we dive into uh, our pay solution, um, this is today the most uh, integrated and, and efficient solution that is available on the market. Uh, highest level of integration uh, and is the first platform uh, that has been approved by both Visa and MasterCard uh, for sales in the open market. Uh, we of, uh, on the card you find both an ISO contact plate module, which is then hosting uh, software and the uh, operating systems and applets, uh, but also uh, the fingerprint sensor is then integrated on the card um, uh, as well. Uh, for uh, being able to activate the card, you of course need to enroll yourself on the card with your uh, biometry, which is your thumb. And that you can do in the, with different type of solutions that we also offer. Uh, so we have a sleeve uh, offering, uh, we have an envelope offering, but we are also the only company today in the world offering a complete mobile enrollment solution. So that is actually an app that you download from uh, um, uh, Apple or uh, Google Marketplace. And then together with your phone, you will actually enroll yourself on the card. Um, and of course, that is then increasing uh, the security in, in, in general terms, as you don't need a PIN code uh, when you um, hit the transaction levels above some 40, 45 euros normally. It's also very convenient because it's contactless um, and um, hygiene is higher. Just thinking about that, we just came out of uh, uh, COVID. Uh, you don't need to touch the keypad uh, at any point in time. 
since the authentication authentication is done through uh, biometry. Um, okay. So um, looking into the value chain where we are active, um, there are companies that are um, um, developing different type of components. In this uh, in this aspect, being uh, Idemia, IDEX, and LinkSense for us, um, but they are component suppliers. What we do is that we system integrate this into a solution, becoming a one-stop offering for the people in the value chain in terms of smart card manufacturers, or being it uh, per personal bureaus or payment processors or the card issuers slash banks. Um, so we offer the complete uh, integrated solution to the ones that will actually manufacture the card, uh, including the manufacturing processes. Uh, we also provide, I mean, our card is also then pre-certified by both MasterCard and Visa, uh, and we offer the mobile enrollment uh, solution as, as uh, the only company today on the, for the open market. Uh, then we actively work, I mean, our customers are today the smart card manufacturers, uh, but we also support uh, the personal bureaus in the work they need to do in developing scripts that needs to be loaded on the card uh, and the payment processors that maybe needs to need to do adjustments uh, um, throughout the network in order to make these cards uh, work in a smooth way. And then we also work either with our customers, the SCMs, or directly also with issuers in explaining the advantage and the business case of introducing biometric uh, payment cards uh, to the market. Next one is uh, if you if you try to size this market, I I can say upfront that this market has been uh, quite delayed in its takeoff. It has been estimated. I know when I joined a little bit more than one year ago, where the market should have been at that point in time, and where the market should have been. Uh, when we ended the first half year this year. So we can say that the adaptation and uptake of biometric cards um, on the open market worldwide has been somehow slower uh, than, than, uh, than anticipated. So the graph, the curves that you see in front of you have slightly slided out to the right. Uh, every year, there are some 3 billion payment cards shipped globally and uh, and it's estimated that uh, within a uh, decade, basically 30% of these uh, cards would be uh, equipped with uh, or will be biometric payment cards. So the, the uptake and adaptation is somehow uh, slower, but the market is enormous that is in front of us. Uh, one could, of course, say, yeah, but what about mobile wallets? Mobile wallets are around, but in, in, uh, in um, four out of five regions, uh, the payment card is the absolutely dominant way of paying, and uh, four out of five transactions are still made by, uh, by payment cards worldwide, and it's estimated that that will continue for quite some time. It's also so that this is a way of, uh, for, the, for the banks to take back the initiative of increasing security, while some of the mobile players are claiming that they are the, 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 that's the safest way of a paying because many phones or most of them are today working with, with biometry while normal payment cards are not, it's only PIN codes. And so it's a way for the bank with a product they are offering, meaning the card, because that's a direct relationship with, with, uh, with users, that they can actually increase the security to their customers directly and not uh, depend on, on Google or Apple. Um, if we, if we shift the focus to um, access, um, the access card uh, is, uh, a, I mean, most of us that are working in different type of enterprises, we have something around our neck or in our belt in order to open doors uh, or, um, or open uh, certain folders on, uh, on the drives. Um, and, um, and here we see that just looking at the world around us, uh, security, uh, is kind of the, the, the need for higher security is, uh, is, is increasing. So, so we see a great response from the market uh, uh, when we offer this type of solutions. The good thing here is that you don't need to replace your reader. 
So all the readers that are already out there, uh, they, they work with our cards. So we are fully certified and compatible with uh, HID Global and Legic. So all those installations worldwide uh, would actually work uh, with our cards. So um, no need to replace a lot of infrastructure. You just replace the cards and by that you're increasing the security uh, in, um, in your, on your premises. Um, and, and, and what do you then get? I mean, uh, you of course uh, get the solution that is much cheaper uh, to implement uh, if, you want, if you want higher security. I mean, you could always go for changing all the readers to be biometric readers, which of course is changing a lot of infrastructure that has been installed uh, and deployed. Um, and, and here you can actually, in a cost efficient way, roll this out very fast. Again, it's uh, convenient and hygienic. You don't need to touch any keypad, uh, as many of us know, before eight o'clock or after six o'clock, where you actually need to punch in your PIN code. Uh, you can't just tap the card. Um, GDPR is not the problem, uh, as it is in many other. Uh, biometric um, security systems where the data would be stored centrally on a database. In, in our case, all the data, the biometric data, is actually stored on the card and nowhere else. And the card is, of course, with you, which means that there is no central storage for anyone to break into. Um, it's reliable and advanced, also in terms of that even if, if, if uh, the use case here is uh, access, um, these cards have been validated and approved by uh, all kinds of security measurements and quality aspects from Visa and MasterCard. Uh, and, and when you get that tick in the box, of course, the cards are also good to go for, for access. Um, and it's easy for people to understand. Just hold your thumb on the, on the black little square box and then the card will be activated and you can tap it on the door and the door will open. Um, the, the value chain uh, for access is very much different. Uh, here you have a dominant player uh, that are um, kind of setting the standard on the different readers. We are working with complying to the HID and Legic standard. And uh, in this case, we are actually not offering uh, components that have been pre-validated into a solution to a card manufacturer we're actually providing the full card. So we, Swipe, have the capability of producing cards in-house um, and, uh, and uh, loading the right applets on the cards. So when we ship, we ship a complete card to the different distributors or system integrators uh, in the value chain. So as this picture is, is, is uh, indicating, there are people working with like system and subsystem providers uh, like Door Macabre, like HID that belongs to Assembly uh, and others. Um, and then there are distributors um, in, in different countries um, versus the pay market. This is very much a, a per country uh, setup, right? So you need to find your local distributor uh, your local system integrator and the companies that will actually do the installation and service at the premises of the enterprise uh, when it comes to different type of entrance and security solutions. So to the far right, you have the end takers, the, 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 uh, the enterprise itself uh, that want different types of uh, corporate cards that their employees should have. And, and then the question is, who is the company that is providing them with their entrance and security solutions and installing those solutions. Those are the distributors and system integrators that we are then working with. And we have had a great success in, in North America, signing up uh, many well-known companies uh, and are in discussions with even uh, more of them in order for them to be able to offer our card as a part of the solutions and services that they are offering to their enterprise customers. Um, we are also pursuing airports in Europe and we are pursuing um, in Sweden uh, different type of enterprises um, together with, with well-known system integrators. So a, a, a great response in many, uh, in many aspects. Um, the market 
uh, for uh, security and, and uh, access is, is huge and growing. Um, there is a, close to 11,000 uh, smart card readers, not cards, that uh, um, are predicted to be installed by uh, 2024. Um, and there is also an estimate that there will be basically uh, some 460 or let's say half uh, a billion smart cards that will be shipped annually in 2024. So this is a huge market. And, and of course, just looking at the, at the world around us, uh, increased security is on the agenda for, for many uh, premises and, uh, and enterprises. So uh, the response on this side is, is great. And, and we say the time is now. Um, we have been working hard for many years uh, to, uh, to complete all the R&D work, to get all the necessary certifications on pay for MasterCard and Visa, also helping our customers to receive their certifications from MasterCard and Visa. Um, we are well uh, represented in, in uh, Asia Pacific uh, and in Europe and in the Middle East. Um, and, uh, and we see that uh, the traction that we are having in talking to our, uh, to our customers and uh, uh, you know, doing joint customer visits, vis visits of our with our customers to their customers, meaning the issuers and the banks. Um, so, so here it's a, it's a great response. So as you can see in this, uh, in this chart, uh, last year, it was uh, 14 announced commercial launches uh, or pilots that was um, publicly announced. Uh, year to date, uh, there is seven, uh, of which six are commercial launches, and two out of these six belong to Swipe, and uh, that we have announced publicly, which is KIB uh, and MEPS in Middle East. Uh, where we got a, a great response from the markets and, and coverage on, uh, on the launch that we had done with, with uh, our customer, the smart card manufacturer, but also with the banks, with MasterCard and with Visa. So, so of course, the spillover effect is that we will have many more to follow. Uh, we are also very well covered in 10 countries in Asia, and, and we have a very good position in Europe with the partners that we have signed with. Um, so we see that uh, even if delayed, um, 2023 is the year of inflection uh, where this market will take off. And it's not only us, it's many actors in, um, in this uh, industry that are pushing this forward in order to make the market uh, this year. So from a technology point of view, everything is ready to go. Um, so, there are multiple uh, things to, to look for. Uh, of course, you can always look at uh, the number of active pilots. They are not always communicated. Sometimes the banks don't want us to talk about pilots they are doing. Uh, nevertheless, there are pilots ongoing in all corners of the world, um, and there are more pilots to come. But as as uh, the market is maturing and as many have tested the technology, I, I think that we will not talk about pilots, we will talk more about soft launch. So uh, you will go straight into launching uh, to certain segments and see how that works uh, before you spread it to all segments. And that, that is basically what we see with, I have the card here from KIB in Kuwait uh, that, that uh, released the card to their most prominent Visa Infinite customers. Uh, some 500 cards, and now they are deploying that down to and offering it down to, to all customers of theirs in the bank. Uh, on Swipe Access, uh, there are many proof of concepts out there, uh, many system integrators and distributors that we have signed. Uh, not that we have been allowed or, or uh, have been able to disclose all of them, but I think that we have built a pretty good partner network uh, and commercial orders will come during uh, second half. Uh, and some of them we're announcing as box and pilots, others we are not, uh, but that is what you should be looking for uh, so that we see that we are uh, closing and, and moving forward. Uh, so the near term priorities is of course for us to accelerate 
um, the, the, the go-to-market efforts, you can say, in both pay and, uh, and access, uh, accelerate commercialization of biometric cards, um, and, and, and work with the go-to-market partnerships that we're doing. Um, also push our SCM, meaning the, the pay uh, card makers, uh, to be very active, and they are very active out with the banks. Um, at the same time, of course, we, we need to hold back on, on, on uh, our burn, monthly burn rate until we achieve meaningful revenue in order to kind of continue building the company. We just scaled it down. Um, and, and then support our customers in, in whatever type of uh, certifications or help they would need in the manufacturing process uh, to create the right yield and the right throughput in, on their machines uh, when the orders come. Um, of course, we are continuously working with expanding the pipeline uh, of, of uh, partners so that we will continue doing. Uh, and uh, even though we are not now focusing on, on, on new heavy R&D work, of course, there are always things to, be do, to do in order to have the right certificate in place and, and to have an efficient solution and a competitive solution. Uh, we're not spending uh, a, a tremendous amount of money on, on the development these days. It's more on the go-to-market efforts, but we are still on par with what we need to do in order to have a competitive solution. I think that's the last slide, uh, so I will stop presenting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think then it's Q&A, yeah. right? Exactly. So, so thank you very much for that, Robert. Uh, maybe I'll start by saying you... You released Q2 earnings or H1 earnings this morning, and, and you wrote in your prepared remarks that it's, it's taken a bit longer than expected for the market to take off. And the first question here, are you referring to pay or access or both? Um, I, I would say on pay. Uh, on pay, uh, the adaptation and uptake of biometric cards are taking longer. So we can say that it's not the stuff that we are doing really that are taking longer time, but it's actually up to the banks, meaning our customers' customers, that are taking longer to decide for a goal. Uh, let's do a mass deployment because it's the mass deployments that will change this game, right? Not not doing, you know, another 10 or 20 pilots. It's, mm -hmm. it's the ones that have tried it that we want to really launch big. Um, so there, there is a, a, a delay. On access, I think that, you know, just looking at the situation from the moment I came in, access was not really in the focus of the company. I mean, we were geared to do pay, and, and that market was like enormous, uh, predicted already for second half last year. Now, that has been delayed, so we have gradually built up our capabilities on, on, uh, on access. And, and of course, if you start from a very low level, it takes time to build the go-to-market machine, to hire people, and to sign up all those partners that you need in order to uh, to um, to succeed. So I think that there we are on track, um, and revenue will come. Interest is great, but but uh, we have, you know, actively been putting resources on access for a little bit more than half a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. If, if I'll, if I'll lift, the, lift the view a little bit and I look for the next, let's say, two, three years, and, and you try to kind of gauge your level of optimism, is it higher on payment or on access cards? And where do you see the highest probability that you will actually succeed in the, in the shorter term? I the think we will take off. No, but I, I think we will succeed on both, but I think that it will be slower than expected, and it is slower than expected on pay. So, so I mean, of course, we need to succeed on pay. It's an enormous market of, of three billion cars being deployed, and 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 only getting you know one two percent of that is is a huge market. So, of course, that is happening, but it's happening slower than expected. On on access, it's a different ball game because the whole go to market is different, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is no. There is no enterprises that have millions of employees. I mean, typically a bank, a bigger bank, they have they have millions of customers, right? So they have millions of cards that, that they are constantly circulating uh, with their customers, even in tiny countries like Sweden. Uh, there are still banks that have millions of customers. 
So, so I think that that uh, in access it will go like step by step because I mean a, a big deal on access is like you know five thousand cards. That would be a small deal on pay. Pay would be hundreds of thousands of cards for for every bank. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think time different types of business. Unfortunately, I think time's up, so we'll have to cut it there. But thank you very, very much for coming here to talk to us. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you.